Hi, I'm here with Brandon Berger, who's the Chief Digital Officer of Ogilvy & Mather, and we're here talking about wearable computing for Ogilvy Do. Brandon's just come off stage at the Verge 2013 conference, where he uh, moderated a panel with uh, a researcher, a producer of uh, wearable computing, and himself. And was there someone else on there? And our Chief Data Officer. And, of course, the Chief Data Officer, Todd Cullen, who you also have an interview with uh, available on the website. And Brandon's going to help us understand a little bit more about the ideas behind wearable computing and what we think about uh, the data that's being transformed and created as a result and what we do with it and what we think is right. So, Brandon, you mentioned uh, something interesting, which was this notion of the evolution of the quantified self. Could you talk to us about sure. that? Sure. I mean, I think I think what's what's happening today is, you know, we, we've been talking for a long time about this idea of the Internet of Things, mm -hmm. right? And I think now, you know, we're getting to a point of the Internet of Things, and now we're becoming getting to the, to the Internet of Social Things, right? It's, so, and, and what that means for the quantified self is, in the past, we've been able to track things, right? Whether whether you know whether it's your pedometer or it's your um, blood pressure monitor or your glucose meter, all these these things that allow us to track and get information. Now these devices are now connected, so we're able to build on our own quantified self, right? So I can sit and keep track of my sleep patterns. I can keep track of my when I work out. I can keep track of how much I move, and that's all for me. And that's what I store, and I use it to get better speeds in my running, get more sleep, understand how I'm behaving, all of this stuff, right? But it's all about my quantified self. I think we, we, we're now, as these devices are now connected to the internet and social, we're moving, we've, we've moved in and started to embrace this idea of the, the social self. And I think, you know, Nike Plus is a, is, it was a great example of the social self. And, you know, I mean, people like to share that they're, they've ran five miles in X amount of time or they're running a marathon and whatnot. I think that's exciting. But where I think the holy grail will be is when we get, take this, when we move from the social self really to, to the, the next layer of this, which is about the brand, brand engagement layer, mm -hmm. is what's the role of the brand in the quantified self and the social self movement? How does, that, how does the brand add value to ultimately this, this new ecosystem of data, devices, behaviors, so that my sleep patterns in my personal device of my jawbone ultimately ensure that when I walk into a hotel room, the, my bed is X comfortable, the room is in a place where, this, there's, where it's quiet, it's, the lighting is set up, there's a sleep mask, there's a cup of milk, all these things that kind of make my experience mm -hmm. in a brand environment directly tied to my data that I've been tracking around myself. Well, that's, but that's, that's an interesting privacy and, 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 and sharing question. And, right. and you know we talked earlier about you know, my befuddlement as to why anyone would want to share extremely personal data. But let's take the Alzheimer's thing, for example. Bob, down the street. Right, Bob. Bob, is, right. Bob has the potential of developing yeah. early Alzheimer's. Um, Bob has to make a very serious choice as to whether or not to share that data potentially as a value exchange to make his life better or forestall the onset of, of Alzheimer's. Right. But that exchange of data could have very serious repercussions for him in the present day. Yes. How do we guard against discrimination based on our health data? It's, it, that is a great question. And, and I think I think that will be a that'll be a legislative major issue that we will have to overcome. And I, I, I don't have an answer to that. Mm -hmm. I think um, what will be critical is our ability to control data, right? Mm -hmm. Us as individuals having ownership of all of that data, right? I mean, you know, if, if you, if I was able to, you know, I mean, with, with the healthcare markets shifting into mm -hmm. an open market system um, with health insurance, if I'm able to add a feed of my running patterns or my, or my heart patterns to ultimately Ins give me lower cost insurance, there's a benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, if I don't want to add that information, I should be able to choose, right? Right. And I think, I think the ability to have control of your data will be important moving forward. And I think as soon as we start um, forcing the hand of access to data, I think that's where we become, you know, almost draconian, I think. Right. One final question. Uh, you frequently uh, talk about the importance and the attractiveness, particularly for the generation that came up after, say, you know, 1990, uh, of gamification. Yeah. Um, what's the role of gamification in the quantified self? <laughs> you know, it's funny, because um, there's, there's a, um, a friend of mine who's a, a VC in Silicon Valley, um, is a huge game of vacation guy and a game guy and a quantified self guy and we debate this all the time but I think I think fundamentally 
the quantified self is like a perfect human way of seeing gamification, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm tracking my heart rate or my blood pressure or all these things, I consistently, I'm watching it. I'm trying to beat the last day and get better and better and better. And what's amazing about it is it, it, it's, it's human and it's natural and it's, and it's just the, it's the ultimate example of that. It's, it's not about force. It's not, it's not force. It's not, um, derived, it's really the way it works. I mean, if I'm an athlete, I'm trying to beat my time. If I'm, you know, trying to get healthy, I'm trying to uh, achieve certain metrics. It's, gamification is the perfect example for this. Um, so just to wrap up, is there anything that you see coming down the horizon in wearable computing that makes you think that we might finally be living in sort of, and this is going to be a wild question, forgive me, uh, but m might finally be achieving something of what Jan von Neumann talked about with the singularity or Ray Kurzweil talked about, where, where we're really getting to a point where we're past the point where humans can really fully understand our own lives. Is what we're looking at in wearable computing, in your opinion, actually a step towards that? Um, or is that still a science fiction notion? I mean, you know, it is a science fiction notion. I do believe that, that some of the principles of it are, um, are true. And it's funny that you asked me this question because I talked about it in uh, China, in a, in a oh. publication in China. So I think that, you know, obviously there, there's, there's tiers and, and levels to this, mm. to this, um, to the, the evolution to this point. I don't think we're, we're at a point where we're going to be completely plugged in and, and, and data driven. That being said, um, having access to all of this information um, in the right hands will hopefully add quality of life and value to us. Um, in the wrong hands, there's a lot of risk. Yeah. Um, and it's very easy for it to go either way. Um, so it's still at a tipping point. I still think it's, a, uh, but I, I, I don't, I, I don't think we, I don't think we're at the tipping point at all mm. because there's not enough, we're not connected enough. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a while before we hit that point. Um, I don't think it's going to be a hundred years from now, but I think it will be a while before we get to the tipping point of that that that, that discussion. But it's a, it's hopefully we'll both be alive for it. Yeah, I'm, it, I'm curious to it, see what happens. Yeah. You know, and if we're, if we're alive for it, then we'll be alive for a lot longer. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. Right? We'll so, swallow something that will keep exactly. us alive forever. Google's you know trying to make people live for 150 years. We'll see what happens. So you'll be seeing us on OglevyDo.com <laughs> now in the year 2020 yeah. or 20 uh, 2200. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway. Great. Thanks, Thank you Brandon. So much. It was really good, good to talk to you. Thank you. OglevyDo.com, and we're going to wrap it up from Verge now, 2013 edition. We'll be back next year.